Have you ever wanted to stream to multiple platforms simultaneously? Well, Restream.io may be the choice for you. Stay tuned. Welcome to Live Streaming Tech, and if you want to learn to stream like a pro, make sure you click that subscribe button and turn that bell notification on so you don't miss a single video. Okay, in today's video, Dale is going to show you how to install and set up Restream.io so that you are able to stream to multiple platforms simultaneously. Platforms such as Facebook, YouTube, Mixer, and Twitch. So, take it away, Dale. Before we start jumping into things, I think it's important to note that I've used Restream.io services before through the monthly plan. I did it for about a couple months and it was about $19 per month. Huge reason that I used Restream and I was willing to pay that much is they actually have distribution to Facebook groups, whereas a lot of the other aggregators through multi-streaming don't handle that just yet. So that right there identifying one of my pain points and I was willing to pay upwards of $19 per month Good news was two months into everything, AppSumo ran out a deal that I was able to get lifetime access for pretty much the same stuff, and that was about $49. I'm sure we'll cover a lot of that in a future review video. For now, we're gonna go through the full setup. Wanted to let you know why you're gonna see a little bit of a differentiation if you were just starting on Restream. So I'm gonna go ahead and redeem my product code, and when I get to the sign-in page, we'll take it from there. Okay, so now that we're on Restream.io, you're gonna end up setting up your services and put in your email address and of course set up a password code of some sort. Okay, as mentioned, I already have a lifetime access code to something like this, so your screen will probably be a little bit different than mine once when you get all signed up and signed in. They may end up having to get you to confirm your account and whatnot. Okay, so the very first thing we're gonna to need to do is add some channels in here. Of course, this is gonna probably be pretty intuitive, but we'll go ahead and walk through it anyways. Uh, my main concern is probably uh, shooting out to YouTube, to Twitch, over into Facebook groups and uh, beyond. Periscope's another good one. So what we'll do is add channel. Let's go into stream now for YouTube. We're gonna connect a YouTube stream now. It'll ask for permissions, choose the appropriate channel. Okay, so now we've got that one all set up. Let's see about adding a couple other ones in there. Let's add channel. Let's do Twitch. Let's connect Twitch. All right, once more we're all set, we're gonna authorize and have them uh, post on our behalf when we're using their aggregation software. Why stop at that? We're using this, we want as well see if we can utilize every single avenue. And the nice thing is, is when we get into here, if we don't want to stream to a specific platform, all we have to do is turn the off button. We can turn it on. And also, if we ever want to change out, let's say for instance, we have a separate Twitch channel we wanna to go to, or we're doing guest hosting on someone's specific channel, we can always go edit settings and then correct it from there. We're gonna add a channel and might as well utilize some of the premium options to where we can actually shoot out into other platforms because this is what usually costs through the Restream uh, platform. So let's take advantage of this. We're gonna hit Facebook Live, connect Facebook. I'm not looking at doing my uh, personal platform, um, but why don't we go ahead and we're gonna test it out one of these here. Now, a continuous live stream enables continued streaming past Facebook's eight hour limit, but a recorded version isn't stored to your page after the stream ends. So this is pretty important. If you are not gonna be doing some epically long stream, leave this deselected. If you plan on staying underneath that eight hour window, leave it unchecked. Now, if you, you are kind of a gamer or you're a person who likes to do a hangout for longer than an eight hours at a time, then chances are you're gonna to wanna to check that off. But remember, you're going to lose the ability for people to come back and watch replay. On Facebook, it's been my experience that most of the audience comes to watch the replay versus being there live. So I'm just gonna hit save. Let's add Periscope, why not? Now, before we do shoot off into Periscope, it's very important to note, they're kinda of like Facebook in the regards that they have specific settings and um, where Facebook, you have to be at 720p in resolution. Periscope has not only the limit on resolution, but they have a limit on audio. So you actually have to have your audio down to a lower level. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't you know, pop off top of my head. So we're gonna connect Periscope, and I'm just gonna go ahead and log in. And Okay, so now that I have the Periscope account set up, uh, keep in mind, you may want to set up your Periscope in advance, and it, of course, it's associated with your Twitter account, so it's going to just be a simple case of hit and authorize. 
Okay, so now we've got about four channels. We can add in additional channels if we wanted to, including Mixer, uh, VK Live, D Live, one of the ones we've been talking about here. Uh, but just for simplicity's sake, I think you can kind of get the understanding of what to do as far as selecting the appropriate platform. You just may want to check the, spe the specifications for each one of these platforms in order to properly stream to it. To keep things a bit simple though, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to utilize their new feature. You don't need OBS, believe it or not, to actually go onto these platforms. But in the event that you do, we're going to go ahead and address that in just a moment. So let's go and we're going to use the webcam in just a moment. But before we do that, let's hit titles. Now here's where we're going to start to set up our stream title. So I'm going to put down and I know some people are going to yell at me for doing all caps, but whatever, testing out new restream software. So that way people aren't completely going crazy on what's going on. Now, if you happen to be playing games, you can go into the drop down and see if you can find it there. In this instance, we're not doing any games, so I'm just going to leave that go. Here's the cool thing. As soon as you hit update all, it's going to populate out into the different areas. So for instance, on YouTube and you're live streaming now, it actually will put that title right there. So that's pretty neat. Update all. Alrighty, now we've updated. Now let's go into social alerts. Where we're gonna do, and this is something that Walt would agree with me on, is when you're going live, it's important that you invite people to the party. Otherwise, you're just gonna be talking to yourself. And yeah, replays are all well and good, but it's great to have that human interaction, that person-to-person -person, you know, chatting, so that way it feels more like a social engagement rather than somebody just kind of being weird. So let's go ahead and connect an account on Twitter. I'm gonna authorize the app. Nice thing is, I'd already gotten things set up through Periscope, so I've already given Restream some permissions. So it was just a case of saying, hey, you can go ahead and tweet on my behalf. Um, I don't have one set up for Discord. Uh, I, I know I'm going to probably get shamed for this one, but I'm going to hit Connect Account for Facebook. Yeah, you know what, let's go ahead and keep it there. And of course, choose any ones that would be uh, relevant to your particular uh, stream. So I'm just going to go ahead and do it right there, and I'll probably end up deleting it later. Manage your pages, yes, we can, you know, so you actually have to give them permission to allow that, and uh, it's not a big conspiracy theory. It's not like they're gonna go over and shut down your account or start to charge your card or anything. They're just essentially saying, hey, can we post on your behalf? Because technically, that's what they're doing, being an aggregator through multi-streaming. So we're gonna hit done. You're now linked, awesome. Before you feed off anything, uh, put together a very brief thing explaining what's going on. So what I'm gonna say is, now I'm just going to update this and when I go live, it's going to send it out to those different networks there. All right, so let's see about doing the two different ways that we can go live. There is one way it's going to be using OBS, the other way it's going to be doing webcam. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the webcam first. We'll fire it off. We'll go into webcam and let's just go ahead and start it on up. We're going to head and fire it up. And see it says go live now it's going to be a bit more problematic when i hit go live unfortunately since i'm recording this program here for you it's going to stop this so un unfortunately uh, i'm going to have to just tell you at this point you just go live there's going to probably be a little bit of a delay based on some of the platforms i found facebook's a little bit slower than youtube youtube's a little bit slower than twitch twitch is probably the most efficient i've found so far but nonetheless uh, if you need to adjust any kind of settings to switching out to your microphone going into specific cameras and going for a specific resolution then this is where you're going to manage it bear in mind depending on where you're sending out your stream to you may have to adjust this so for instance as i said facebook is 720p you want to keep it 30 frames per second um, and I believe Periscope has some type of an audio limit that you can do here. So quality, we can go high, it says not recommended. We can go low, but that's for like slow network. It's gonna be a little bit more choppy. It's gonna be more, more pixelated. It depends on what you plan on streaming. Okay, so we're gonna X out of this. And now let's go into our specific key. The RTMP URL and key. So this is what we're going to need in order to use it on Streamlabs OBS. So let me go ahead and we're gonna open up Streamlabs OBS. Here we go. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go up into settings and we're gonna go into stream. You're gonna select in the drop down restream.io, RTMP, 
All right, so I'm gonna get rid of the stream key code and now we're gonna go over into Restream and we're gonna go ahead and copy this. Now it's copied. We're gonna go on over in here and all we need to do now is hit paste and we hit done. Now when we are ready, we can literally hit go live down here in the bottom right hand corner. If you happen to be using OBS Studio Classic, then obviously it's not gonna be the same look as this, but you're gonna be entering the same information in the relevant areas. As soon as you hit go live, the social media feed will shoot out saying, hey, we're live, depending on where you selected Discord, Twitter, or Facebook, it'll send those things out. So in any event, that will get you all set. Okay, last but not least, we're gonna go ahead and cover Restream's chat option. You'll select the chat option here, and you can just download it for Windows. Now what this does is it aggregates all of the chat that you have from the various platforms so you can manage it. So let's go ahead and hit download for Windows. You can also open it in browser, but sometimes as you know, I do, I'll have my browser already open and I don't like managing too many windows. The Restream chat feature is pretty nice in that you can actually have it set up and it doesn't interfere with anything. So let's go ahead and left click on it. We'll install anyway, sign in, and you may have to do this from time to time. And we are all set here. So essentially when you go live, all of the chats are gonna start to aggregate in there. Now I know that every now and then you may have to refresh the chat. Sometimes it gets a little bit laggy. I know that it's not currently supporting Facebook groups chats but I had talked to some of the developers and they said that they are actively working on this feature. You can do other things through Facebook, but apparently groups are just kind of one of those areas that they haven't yet problem solved. You can drop down on here and find out where the specific sites are. So whatever channels you have set up, it's gonna pop up in here. Okay, and the other thing you can do is you can actually go into settings, you can change the appearance, the way you get your notifications, you can embed it in stream, you can go into uh, the bot, analytics, discord filtering, and so on and so forth. This is a really cool feature. If I just shut this off, you'll notice that if I drag it around, it actually will not completely cover up what you're seeing, and you can end up adjusting it however you wish. You can make it big, you can make it small, you can make it take up the entire screen. For me, I'll typically put it like this, and then I'll have Streamlabs OBS put right over top of the desktop, and this kind of just, it hovers right above it. You notice this? So it doesn't, it gets it to where you can see what's going on inside your chat and who's talking and where they're talking from, so that way you can kind of manage things a little bit more proactively. What I do want to bring to your attention is, yeah, you can use the webcam feature, but might I recommend that you take a look at Streamlabs OBS. In fact, we show you exactly how to utilize this tool in actually a few different platforms. So I'm gonna send you right over to this next video so you can see exactly how to use Streamlabs OBS. I'll see you there. So this is uh, Streamlabs OBS version 0.11.11. .11. Starting out streaming, I would recommend that you uh, start out with Streamlabs OBS.